Good evening, everyone. This is Coil Tube School Level One Part Two. If you haven't seen the previous video, please watch it. In the previous video, we talked about history of Coil Tube, how it was first made through all of these inventions till current Coil Tube, and we also talk about manufacturing in which process we convert this sheet of metal into round pipe coil tube okay then we talked about surface unit all surface unit till there we talked about coil tube reel coil, uh, coil tube reel over a level over wind and Today, inshallah, we will talk about injector head. So let's start. Injector head consists of many things, and it is more is the most revolutionary invention of quality, in my opinion. In this section, we can see all of these components, and Guzlik in this part was hidden, which is this one. So it consists of loading cylinders or traction cylinder pressure traction pressure cylinders and here we can see two hydraulic motors these two hydraulic motors connected to driven or driving sprockets these driving sprockets drive these idle sprockets so these two called idle sprockets and these two called driving sprockets Hydraulic motors rotating sprocket, uh, driving sprockets in <laughs> sorry, in reverse directions. So this sprocket will drive in this direction clockwise, and this in anti clockwise. This in case of running all coil tip in pull out of full the reverse this sprocket will, will, will rotate anti-clockwise and this will rotate clockwise when this rotates it rotates a chain in yellow color in yellow color this chain is connected to this idle sprocket so it rotates it with its, with its rotation it also connects two gripper blocks in gray color and it has rollers in red color also, these traction cylinders connected to or pushing against this skate bar or inside the skate bar. So, the cycle as follows. The traction cylinder pushes against inside skate or skate bar. The skate bar pushes rollers and rollers pushes a chain which is connected to gripper blocks and the gripper blocks is connected to coil tube itself. So this is about hydraulic motors, sprockets, chain, and traction cylinders. We have here a chain tension cylinder, which pushes this sprocket to make the chain always in tension and prevent the chain buckling in case of high pressure well. But so we have load cells which reads weight measurement of coil tube. It can read compression or Tension. Or both. We will talk about everything in next slide. Here we can see sprockets, as you see. Here is sprocket and sprocket. And these are the driving sprocket connected to connected to hydraulic motors. Is the red one? This red one is a hydraulic motor, and also this one. When rotates by hydraulic pressure, it rotates the shaft connected to these chains okay so this is sprockets from above gripper blocks surrounding the coil tube and as it rotates with the chain it inject or pull the coil tube in or out of the wall this is single gripper blocks the chain has gripper blocks along its length so as you can see from here all of this is gripper blocks. All of this gray 
color is gravel blocks. And this is only one gravel block. You have one above, one below, and so on, until you have the complete cycle of chain. The gravel blocks, as you can see, has gripping action due to this shape and this structure. This is schematic view of gravel blocks with a chain. These are the ro rollers, as we say. The rollers to allow the chain to move against skip off. Imagine if these rollers are, are not there, the traction cylinder will push the skate bar and skate bar will push directly against the chain. So there will be a great friction between them. So this is the chain, roller, and the gripper blocks. We have two types of gripper blocks, semicircular block and variable diameter block. Semicircular block is made for only one size of coil tube, for example, one and a half. It has a stress distributed around the circumference of coil tube, so forces are less. In variable diameter block, the contact points are two points, so, so forces are higher. And the advantage is it's suited for many sizes of coil tube. It has a range of sizes of coil tube. This is the final, si the final picture of a chain with grabber plus. The traction pressure, as we said, it pushes against skateboard and skateboard pushes against rollers and then chain with gripper blocks. Finally, at coil tube. It's called, it's called inside traction or traction pressure. Outside traction or chain tension is made from these cylinders pushing against only idle, idle sprockets to make this, this chain in tension or with the tension. These are, as you can see, piston, piston, the stainless part, and cylinder and hydro hydraulic pressure from this hose inside this pushes against piston. So it pushes either sprockets, this one and this one, keeps it as a, to keep the chain always in tension. Width measurement is made by many methods. It can be hydraulically or electrically. For hydraulic one, to measure both tension and compression, you must have two load cells, pipe heavy and pipe light, and all, and of course, pivot points. This pivot, pivot point makes the injector rest with its weight on these two load cells. So one will measure the tension and the other one will measure compression. As you can see from here, this is a compression load cell and tension load cell with fulcrum point here. So your injector in cyan color will rest on this load cell and this load cell. So if our system is hydraulically measuring weight, we can have two load cell, one for tension and one for compression. If, and this is the image of hydraulic load cell, we have piston here, pushing against diaphragm, and this diaphragm pushing against hydraulic oil, pressurized in this hose up to this weight indicator. So the injector weight rests on there, on this flat surface, pushing against diaphragm, the diaphragm pushing or compressing oil, compressed oil goes through this hose to read in this weight indicator. It can be, as we said, tension or compression. For electric load cell, we have strain gauges here, here, here we have strain gauges. As this load cell deforms, the strain gauges shape changes, so the, the resistance and electrical powers it changes. And this is measured by this electric cable at, ca at cabin. So this is two types of load cell, hydraulic and electric. We can see here dips counter. This is a mechanical dips counter, and this is dips encoder to represent this value in controlled cabin electrically in data acquisition system. So this data is recorded and interpreted. 
Please note that we have also a second mechanical depth counter on level wind on reel. And usually we observe the depth from this one on reel, not this one, because this one is far from the operator, unlike the depth counter on the reel. Finally, about injector, we say to the goose neck is the final part of injector. We talked about this part, traction cylinder, chain tension, skate, uh, grabber blocks. And finally, we talk about goose neck, this part. Another view is this part. As you can see, coil tube is a black, is a black one. It goes around the goose neck, so it is bended in specific diameter. So bending stresses are not high. Also, it moves around rollers. As you see this one, these are ro rollers. Rollers reduces stresses and the friction between goose neck and coil tube. This is the shape of roller for different sizes of coil tube. This is goose neck in retracted position. If you want to expand it, you push hydraulic oil in this piston from cabin or whatever. You push hydraulic oil from there, it pushes this board, so it's erected as this. The radius of curvature of goose neck is determined by ABI recommendations. So for a given tubing size, we have a range of goose neck radius, as you can see from this slide. So now you may have deducted the functions of, of injector heads. It measure weight of coil tube injected or pulled from the oil. So this first one. Secondly, it inject or pull coil tube using, using injector head motors sprockets, chain, traction pressure, chain tension, all of this incorporated to inject or bolt coil tube. It also holds the coil tube in place by gripping action of gripper blocks. So this is the main functions of injector head. Moving to another object of surface equipment is power pack. Power pack is a huge circuits of hydraulic. It contains many hydraulic circuits, so it is very complicated to illustrate it in one or two slides. So here we summarize the components and function of it. Components for our model, it has diesel engine. It may have another types of engines, but for this one, we have diesel engine. It converts diesel combustion of diesel into mechanical energy. This mechanical energy drive hydraulic pumps to give high pressure fluid. This high pressure fluid will drive the reel, the injector, the pressure control equipment. It have also hydraulic oil reservoir so that hydraulic pumps suck hydraulic oil from this reservoir and pump it to whichever component. It also have accumulators. These accumulators store hydraulic energy with nitrogen pressure. So if power pack fails, it can push or pump hydraulic fluid to pressure control equipment. Finally, it has pressure control valves to manipulate pressures and directions. Now we talk about different objects, pressure control equipment. It consists of many barriers. The barrier is called of this name because it prevents fluid leakage at surface. For example, coil tube goes in here, back there, to injector head, to goose neck, to reel. Note that injector head is mounted directly above stair. Okay? So, here coil tube. What prevents leak between coil tube and the surrounding environment? This element, it's called stripper, and we will illustrate it with photos. So stripper is the first or primary barrier of coil tube. So if this primary barrier failed, we got to secondary barrier of coil tube. Here, quad BOP. It has blind ram, shear ram, slip ram, bi ram. 
we close the diagram to seal around the coil tube and fix the leak here then back to normal operation so what if this barrier also leaked or the leak occurs here between these two flanges we can close this barrier which is pipe slip or if we also if we only have shear steel rim we will shear the coil tube to secure the oil so this these are the barriers of the oil. primary barrier stuff uh stripper secondary barrier pup and tertiary barrier shear seal ram stripper has four types conventional side door stripper tandem stripper radial stripper so it's a conventional nowadays was not used too much because it is difficult to change stripper elements with coil through the stripper but it has one advantage that it is well bore assisted well bore assisted means that if full bore pressure increases the ceiling around the coil tube increases this is the advantage of conventional stripper the most widely used stripper is side door stripper this one side door stripper is very easy to change stripper in it we easily open the door retract the piston and change stripper then back then close the piston and so on if we want to have two side door stripper above each other we may nibble up this side door stripper above this stripper so the stripper is called tandem stripper as it is used in conjunction with another stripper so if we mount this above this we have two side door strippers above each other which is called tandem stripper okay and if we have tandem stripper we always use upper power so if we mount this above this we will operate on this one and retract this one so if a leak occurs above this one we close this one and reverse the and reverse this one the above one finally we have radial stripper radial stripper it allows us to have a short stack especially in offshore because offshore has limitations of height so it allows us to have short stack of equipment it also allows to lose external offset to pass through it because backing element can be retracted to access full bore so the stripper is our primary barrier it allows seal around coil tube it is like the tube that allows seal around the coil tube in static and dynamic positions the closing and opening mechanism of this stripper is we pump pressure hydraulic oil from there it goes from this port pushing against this piston so it compresses this pink the pink is steric element here is the real picture of it it consists of two halves separate two halves and it deforms to form a seal around the coil tube if we push if we bump hydraulic oil with pressure from this direction it will push against this cylinder and retract the piston so releases the pressure from this streaming element quad bub is a secondary barrier of operation consists of four rams so it's called quad blind ram shear ram slip ram by ram blind ram can seen in an empty well with no coil tube in place shear ram can shear the coil tube cut it slip ram can close around the coil tube to hold its weight and lock it in place by ram can close around the coil tube and hold the brush from blue so if you have leak above the pub ram bob you close the pipe ram this schematic view of pub rams this is another picture as you can see the pipe ram is different from blind ram blind ram close 
with no coil in place. This closed in coil in place, so it has a groove to match the coil OD. Slip ram has inserts to grip the coil tube and hold it in place, so you can hang it. This is another picture. This is video. So this if we want to cut the coil tube and hold it in place. This may appear if you have leak of coil tube itself. Bin hole in coil tube or parting of coil tube. So may, you may use this procedure. You will close the slip ram to hold the coil tube in place. Then you will close by ram. See pressure. Then you close the shear ram to cut the coil tube. Then you pull out full three four feet. Then you close the blind ram with no coil tube across it. These are different types of POB. It can be combi. Combi POB consists of shear seal ram and the pipe slip ram. Shear seal is a combination of shear ram and seal ram. Slip pipe ram is a combination of slip ram and pipe ram. It may be only shear seal ram, not combi. This is a shear seal ram, as you can see here, is the shear blade and the seal face. This is, this is the black rubber. This is, but this is inverted ram. This is a slip pipe ram, consists of slip ram and pipe ram, as the name indicates. This is a triple POB. Triple POB ram consists of blind shear ram. It combines blind and shear in one ram. And then pipe ram and then slip ram, or it may be reversed, slip ram and pipe ram. Finally, we talk about coil tube string bit shear. The coil tube goes from coil tube and reel, then coil tube string goes neck injector, into the well. In the end of coil tube, you must have a connection between coil tube as its slick, slick pipe with no connections and the BHA you have, the bottom hole assembly. So this is the coil tube connect. Then you have check valve, release sub mechanism, circulation sub, main tool. And this configuration may be adjusted. Coil tube and the connectors is used to connect the coil tube as a slick pipe to the bottom wall assembly. So this part connects to coil tube and this part connects to bottom wall assembly so it is threaded. This is called the crimble tool. Crimble tool and this is roll on connector. You insert this connector inside the coil tube. So the coil tube is there. Then you move with this crimble tool around the coil tube to make the coil tube match or inserts inside these grooves. The coil tube will be inserted and pushed against these grooves. So this is the roll on connector. This type is used in cases of emergency if you cut the coil tube and do want to connect the broken bar to with a new reel. So you connect the old coil tube from there and the new coil tube reel from there and continue pull out full. Another connector types that have higher pulling, higher pulling strengths are these types. This is dimple or grub screw. This is internal, external. Also, we have internal, external slips connector or gravel connector slips, as you can see from there. It's inserted inside, coil tube is inside it, is inserted inside it. And it can't be pulled, it can be pulled back due to slips action. And here also slips action. And this type, as you can see from this tool, this gray is the coil tube. It inside it insert it's inserted around the connector. Then this tool, as you can see from there, it's two halves. Is inserted around and these these screws are made by this tool, hydraulic yoke, to make impressions in the OD of coil tube to match the impressions already already graved here so this is the final of each coil tube connector this is the rod on as you can see 
كريمبل تول ميك ميك امبريشنز اراوند ذا سيركمفيرنس اوف كول تيوب تو ماتش ذا جروفز انسايد ذا ذا جروفز اوف رول اون كونكتور ان ذا ستايل ذا ديمبل كونكتور وي هاف سيت كوز هير انسرتد تو ماتش ذا انترنال امبريشنز اوف كول تيوب and slips or gravel connector is hold in place by slipping slips action after the connector you can see a check valve check valve can be ball valve flubber etc the flubber valve is most commonly used type because it allows bumping bolts uh, full bore axis unlike bullet check valve bullet check valve prevents dropping bolts for example so it's most uh, it's not used commonly these days then you have releasing action so if you stuck with cool tube and want to release only bha 20 or 30 feet of bha into the well so you can operate this tool this tool is operating by dropping a ball that rests here and applying surface pressure the surface pressure breaks these shear bends and you can bore out a hole with coil tube and the above uh, the above BHA and leave this bottom hole assembly with a standard fish neck to be fished with GS tool this is another type it's called the boss ball operated shear sop this is also not this is also the same mechanism you drop a pole and applying surface pressure so you shear the shearing pin and these dogs are retracted so you can pull out full and leave this standard fish neck circulation sub also you dropping you dropping ball shear shearing pins so you open these ports to allow circulation with maximum flow rate so this is important if your nozzle the gut blocked during operation also if, ha- if you have mud motors blue and you want to save the elastomer of uh, stator so you may this you may use this applications second type of uh, circulation sub is barus disc barus disc don't require uh, doesn't require dropping balls only you you should have is applying differential pressure so this thin walled barus disc is got burst and you can establish circulation from this point MHA or motor hood assembly this consists of double flubber hydraulic disconnect and double circulation okay this is compact heavy duty because it was commonly used with mud motor to decrease the length of PHA auxiliary tools you have strip bars jars accelerator centralizer knuckle joint so if you have a straight bar the straight bar just to extend the lens between jetting nozzle and the hydraulic disconnect to prevent settling of probant or whatever the scale inside the hydraulic disconnect so it won't be functioned uh, also in jarring in jarring to increase the bha and the load produced by the jar knuckle joint knuckle joint allows 360 degree of rotation with 15 degree of angular movement but knuckle joints have many disadvantages it can hang on restrictions it is usually the weak link and tool string and if we have two knuckle joints especially in long BHA a lookup can occur lookup and stop of course you can occur so it's not recommended to use knuckle joints in your BHA Centralizers uh, used to centralize the tool string inside the wheel bore. It can be fixed or flow activated. Flow activated means that it is operated by differential pressure from inside and outside. As you can see, provide standoff for perforation and jetting operation. It centers the tool and allows the passage, the passage through restrictions. It's capable of large expansion with small retracted bend especially this flow activated one uh, also also expansion of springs can be adjusted 
finally we can see min job tool nozzles we can bump from these nozzles chemicals uh, gel nitrogen or whatever so here we have nitrogen lifting nozzle to allow the nitrogen to flow back up there pot jetting nozzle you have the ports directed downward like there to allow penetration of uh, nozzle that also may be used to place cement or plugs or clean out junk mills are used to hard scale or mechanical obstructions and it's used with mud motors it's most likely similar to uh, drill bit in drilling fishing tool we have different types of fishing tool for internal external standard and non-standard fish nets. and finally applications of uh, coil tube is mainly your intervention mainly but also used in well completion and less in drilling so if you have any questions uh, if you have any comments don't hesitate to, con to contact me and the next levels will be much more advanced from this one so keep following and uh, thank you for watching and goodbye